Now, here comes the music. Hi, everyone. It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock my time. I am a DJ. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. It's Buddy with the DJ Roundtable. And we have a special guest today, DJ Cool Thing. All of you from uh, beautiful South Carolina. Of course, I have Matt over there, uh, DJ Salsas. I have DJ Fire, Nathan, and Hunter, which is AKA DJ Cool Thing. Uh, DJ Cool Thing, I know you're new to the round table. Thank you for coming by. Uh, explain to everyone about your business a little bit and what you do and what you DJ and so forth. Well, my DJ business is Cool Thing Entertainment. I DJ weddings, parties, church events, company events, all over Horry County, South Carolina, mainly for family and friends, because I DJ mainly for fun, and I get, like you know I get paid on the side. And how long have you been DJing for? I've been DJing for, well, I started becoming my family's DJ twenty years ago, starting out with a boombox and a CD collection, then I'm became a working dj in 2018 february 2018 so this february comes nine years or five years five that, years that, that's huge because you have a lot of experience prior to actually having a business and i yeah. think that's how we all kind of started because like when i first started djing it was with friends spinning mm -hmm. the records actually on you know running you know 12 inch records uh doing a mixer Good. Which I got um, down there. <laughs> yep. Guy had, guy had the 12-inch records. Remember, <laughs> milk crates around, remember, doing stuff. And it was with friends. It was no money whatsoever. It was just mm -hmm. learning how to do it, learning how to spin, learning how to mix, learning how to beat match, learning music as well, understanding music. And that's one of the things that I feel is also very important as a DJ is that knowing what songs go with what, what works yeah. together. How we could yeah. transition from one song to another song yeah. and get that nice blend of music. Um, yeah. Matt, I know you've been doing it for a long time, and I love your gig logs. That last gig log, oh, my God, man. <laughs> that right there was just absolutely awesome. Uh, just, just I got great. another great – I should have a great one this uh, – This I have a wedding this Saturday. It's a couple that's in their 40s, but they used to go to, like, electro clubs back when House was, like, huge. And so mm -hmm. they're getting like their playlist is pretty bizarre, but it's like '90s and early 2000s house with like a little bit of today's hits, and it should be a fun wedding. And it's at a great venue, and and uh, they got the laser package, and it's a venue I've been at, so I know we can use Hayes. So I got my laser guy coming. So should be a should be a pretty uh pretty dope looking setup. The the wedding I was at, I'll send you a picture later, buddy. But I I don't know. I'll probably Nathan might know too, but I couldn't tell. I was at a community center this weekend and I couldn't tell if they were smoke alarms, like where the smoke passes through and it goes off or if they were heat sensors or if they were just motion detectors, but they were these little boxes that had this circle on them. And I was like, I don't know. Cause I, I have my haze machine and I don't want to set off the alarm and we didn't have a chance to test it beforehand. And it's a new community center. So I was like, there's gotta be smoke alarms somewhere in here. And, uh, but I, I, I would know. probably say, correct me if I'm wrong, Nathan. Um, by I'm, I'm looking into it real quick. Um, smoke smoke detectors usually are in the ducts. Heat detectors are usually in the hallway areas. Uh, yeah. Motion detectors usually are set in corners to send out the radar beam to see if anything's moving inside the room. So depending where they're at. Um, but it is good to err on the side of, of, of caution. And this is one of the things that, you know, you guys out there, you guys have any questions or if that, uh, please. Those. That? That is, it looks like a Wi-Fi thing. Yeah. No, it wasn't a router because we have those at my gym too. And I've seen the router at the gym. So I don't know what the heck it was. But huh. anyway, they also had like these big where the exit signs were. It was like those emergency lights. But there was yeah. also this big unit well, that looked like in, it took. It's a out. commercial style building that has... You know, um, your what do you call it? Uh, where water comes out of the pipe, sprinkler systems. They have like an, a burglar alarm, and they have like a company that monitors. Normally, those alarms are going to look like. Why is my camera not flipping? 
those can or those alarms are going to look like that. They're lasers, and if anything passes through them, they'll go off. These are very, very sensitive. I mean, extremely sensitive. So that's what you're looking for for that will set off. And um, normally, when these go off, nine one one is triggered. So within fifteen minutes, fire trucks are going to start pulling up. Yeah, yeah. Unless you call the alarm company and tell the alarm company, no, it's I'm sorry, it's a false alarm. Right. And uh, fire department new, comes new up and they turn off the fire new. alarm and. It's better off. Uh, I don't know in California. I know in some like in some jurisdictions, uh, you can get a hold of a local fire department, talk to the local fire uh, protection bureau or prevention bureau, and talk to them and ask them about coming out and turning alarms off, and then talk to the venue. Um, they may charge a fee to do that. So I know you use CO two cannons, uh, Matt. So maybe if you use CO two cannons with that. You can use that there, not to worry about triggering a fire alarm. If the alarm yeah, off, we could actually set those off too. Yeah, we went. We weren't like with it. cloud or anything blowing in front of the yeah, anything, there's, anything a laser, laser. there's a laser and a mirror in there, and if that laser gets broken, it triggers it, sets it off. Mm. They're actually better than a regular smoke alarm. They're more sensitive. They'll pick up smoke normally before a regular old style battery operated smoke alarm will. But normally for uh, when the alarm company gets the alarm on their computer screen that says we have an alarm. It, say DJ Solstice's house, they're going to call him. If no answer, they're obviously, while they're calling him, they're automatically dispatching the fire, EMS, police, whatever needs to be dispatched. But um, generally, if they call in, you call in and say, hey, I accidentally set it off. Normally, by law, one engine still has to remain or go to scene and verify for insurance purposes that there is nothing wrong with that way. You can't come back and say, hey, I was confused. I, I thought my house whatever, wasn't on yeah. fire. Turns out it was. Yeah. Yeah. I was just trying to be on the safe side because I, I, this venue is very like, I mean, it's it's a community center. You rent out, and like any little thing that gets scuffed or damaged, they have to pay for. It. So I'm sure if like I set off an alarm, it would cost them like five hundred dollars. So they're very very extremely loud too. You do not want those things going off real close to you. They're they're very loud. They're high pitched. They have a very high frequency tone that they set off. They're loud. They are not quiet at all. Um, and again, if you're watching this live in the chat, you can ask any questions you want to. If you're watching this on the replay on YouTube, make sure that you follow the following DJs. Make sure you go over to DJ Cool Thing, follow his channel. Make sure you go by Matt or by DJ Stealth to follow his channel. And my channel here. Yeah, if you want to get to the right one that is the most up to date, it's Cool Thing Entertainment. That's cool the name of the channel. Make sure you follow him. I will have an at and links down below in the chat in the in the bio on YouTube, so that way you can go on there and go right to them. Yeah, because um, I had I had another channel which that one got hacked. I lost the access to that one. You know, yeah, the unfortunately, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, Hunter lost his. Uh, other channel of bad people do bad things and they took his other channel away. So, yeah, but again, Nigeria. cool thing entertaining you want to look for a DJ Salsas and of course DJ Fire and 343 Studios and also his landscaping uh, business and his girlfriend, which I just watched a video not a uh, day or so ago. They had this cool parade down in his area in central Illinois and his, uh, his lovely girlfriend put up a video of, of the parade, which was really cool and awesome. Watch a nice, cool small town Christmas parade. So if you want to watch some really cool stuff, uh, he has four channels he's running right now. And we're also, unfortunately, we're missing DJ Mike James and DJ I'm, Mike. I'm talking to him. He's responding kind of to me, but he's not, <laughs> not, he might be busy doing something. I don't he, know. You know. He's got his son. He's got, he's got his wife. He's got a lot of stuff going on. I, hey, you know what? I appreciate you guys being here. And again, you guys, one thing with this show we got to thank all these other DJs coming out to the show. So please go to their channels, subscribe to their channels on YouTube, and please make sure you drop a little uh, likes in their uh, YouTube to give thumbs up and support them for supporting this show. And again, if you're watching on YouTube, you want to watch us live on Twitch, you can go over to Twitch, twitch.tv, make an account if you don't have one, very easy, simple, and then follow the channel, which is TBM Productions underscore buddy, on Twitch, you can watch this live on Tuesday nights. It is 8 o'clock Central Time, 9 o'clock Eastern Time, 6 o'clock Pacific Time. So I'll give you kind of ideas on 
and seven o'clock mountain. So depending on what time zone you're on, you can then figure out where you need to be at and where to watch it. If you're watching somewhere else in the world, again, we're in, I'm in the United States, I'm in Chicago, so I'm in the central of the United States. Right now, it's you know after eight o'clock. With that said, um, and with fires and stuff like that coming up on, you know, worrying about things, uh, I know uh, DJ Fire, you just did a, uh, uh, not a gig log, but a great video on your recap of 2022, which was really cool. Um, and again, I, it was just really great seeing those uh, recaps of everything you did and all the work you did. And one of the things I so want to yeah, talk that, about. Yeah, that kind of reminds me of that. I need to do something like that for my YouTube channels, like take some of the most popular, like I'll take all the gig logs, put them into one big video. I just took, I just took the gig logs and took clips out of the gig logs. I didn't put the entire gig log up, just yeah. took clips to kind of spotlight certain parts, yeah. but I, it takes forever to yeah. put something together like that. Cause you want to make sure you get the right stuff and you got to do transitions and find the right music to go with the background and, it, that'd be, it's it'll time be, consuming, but, but it, they turn out pretty good. Worth it. It'll be truly worth it. Yeah, especially as we as we head closer to New Year's Eve. And one of the DJ Soltis, are you doing anything big on New Year's Eve? Uh, yeah, I got a big wedding um, with uh, CO two cannons and confetti for midnight, as well as uh, I think they got the lasers and fog package too. Yeah, so it should, be, mm -hmm. should be fun. Yeah, be on the lookout for my gig log for my annual New Year's Eve party. It's going to be a Russian theme, so I'm going to dress all Russian, and we're going to play some Russian hard bass and <laughs> everything Russian. <laughs> oh, yeah, Paul That's funny. Paul You speak Russian? Um, nope. Okay. Well, my <laughs> I, know, I know a few words. My, but my sister-in-law does. She's, uh, she's Russian or Ukrainian? Uh, Russian. She's yeah. from uh, pa she's pa from, uh is Russian. That's how they say yeah. Russian. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's from Rostov. And th this is one of the things I wanted to get into is that um, I know we're doing end of year stuff and with the holiday season coming up. And I know we all try to do things to uh, help people. Uh, one of the things I, I was thinking about is this year, we have some DJs out there who – uh, unfortunately need help and so forth so on either they lost your gear because of damage or because of theft or some other tragedy happened to those djs out there and again you can see them every so often on facebook um and i was wondering has anyone here looked at anything or tried to help anyone uh especially right now during the holiday season uh dj or non-dj related and given anything or donated anything Go ahead. Not, not really. No, <laughs> but I'm. But my church is like we're going around the community and just helping out our community. What? What were you asking, buddy? If if we had did anything to help out, like an event or something, is that what you're talking about? If you donated your time for an event, I know you did uh, a prom. Did and you, the back to school bash. Back to school bash. Okay. You 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 did you donated some time for that. I know you did that. You gave a great gig log, and you had your huge, huge truss set up there, which looked awesome. The stage is in pr new production right now. That's actually my home church now. It's weird because it's called the home church. But um, next prom, instead of doing the arch, I think I'm going to fly trussing, and I think I'm going to go all three pieces unless I have more truss. Um, if they're talking possibly double the kids that we had last year this next year so we had 120 kids last year um that would be close to 300. oh good wow. good good well what, what so, about you Matt? Are you doing anything have you done pretty anything? good turnout um i did um uh however i think i'm going to be getting uh some cold sparks finally from sheds so I think I want to possibly, she's going to send me one to see if I like it, do a video on it. If that's the case, I'm going to order three more because I think four is a good quantity to have. You know, you could have two where the bride and groom's walking in or kind of, I would like to have six of them, six of them eventually. 
Well, one thing I've done to help out, I mean, this is not DJ related, but it's church related. But so far this year, I've donated so many toys to our church because we're just starting out and we need some toys for the kids ministry. So I just bought some toys for some of the that's, kids to that's play good. with. That's good. That's very, they're very thoughtful. What about you, Matt? Have you, uh, have you got a chance to do anything so far? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I, I don't know. We don't really have too much charity work out here. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, uh, I don't know. Uh, not really. Um, I don't have a church or not really religious like that, but. No, uh, no. But the thing is that, you know, giving, giving, you know, helping someone out one way or another, that's, that's the only thing I, I look for. You know, it's, um, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, there was a Facebook group, uh, actually was on our local news here, um, uh, that this woman who was an addict started, she started this Facebook group and she uh, looks for to help people out. They need something, something small, something little. And you you basically post it onto this Facebook group that you need like, um, like for example, shoes. Uh, this one woman, her husband was diagnosed with uh, skin cancer and he needed shoes. Uh, so my wife joined the group saw someone needed something um, and then donated that item to them and they get shipped to them via Amazon. So you just go to Amazon, you buy it and they ship it to their house, be a toy, be it whatever it is. And it's one of the things that, you know, then the person answered, says back later, Hey, someone bought this for me. Thank you so much. And it's one of those things that it makes you feel really good. And I know there, again, there's DJs out there. There's people out there who need help all across, not just DJs, but everyone. But I always feel this time of year, we have to look back upon the whole year and say, hey, did we help anyone? And if not, if we can, we financially can, if we have the time to do it, give a little help. Even if you go up to the Salvation Army and drop in a, a couple bucks in, the, in the, the, the red kettle, that's helping someone somewhere. And that to me is, you know, this time of year, a sharing and being thankful for everything we have, but also sharing the holiday season itself for all the holidays, Christmas, you know, uh, New Year's, also doing, you know, uh, Hanukkah and doing all the major holidays at this time of year. It's great to share that love and friendship with, you know, everyone. Uh, doesn't matter who they are. Doesn't matter if they're a DJ or not a DJ. It's great. Um, so... The next thing I want to talk about is, and I want to get your guys' opinion on, 2023. I just did a big price increase halfway through 2022 because of all the increase of equipment and price and so forth and so on. And 2023, have you guys seen or are you looking at or are you going to do a price increase for 2023? Yeah, you know, I I'm I not. started. No, oh, go ahead. I'm not. I'm gonna keep at fifty dollars a month. Yeah, fifty dollars, you know, per hour, and then just keep it like that. I mean, it's working for me. It's working for you. Good, good. Fifty dollars per hour is doing just fine. And sometimes I actually get tips because I actually got tips at the A's party, and that was like over a hundred dollars. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. What about what about you, uh, Matt? Uh, yeah, so I went from, uh, I'm trying to find it here. Yeah, so in, in the middle, more like fall, like September, October-ish, I'd raised my prices of all my packages by about 500 and then the top package by 1000 Um, so, and it's more to be in line with, like, what we offer and, like, you know, we're not to toot our own horns here, but we're a little bit better than what people are offering at the same price point uh, or a lower price or a higher price point because, you know, our lighting is, I don't know. I went to a couple weddings and my family went to some weddings and, you know, they saw what the DJ had and saw how much, you know, asked the family friend what they paid him. And I was just like, this is ridiculous. We're just, I just, and I'm like, oh, you know what? We're going to start charging more. And uh, so far it's worked. So uh, I might raise them even more. I mean, I may make my, my, my most, my most popular package is 2400 right now so i may raise that up to like 28 or 29 i don't know cuz i'm i'm well especially in southern california you guys are going to hit with 
a lot of additional fees. You know, your gas prices are much higher than what Hunter they, has to they, deal with. They finally uh, dropped below four today. Three ninety nine a gallon. I paid today. So what? Uh, that's that's it, the no, no, good news about our gas. It's, it's almost it's almost ready to hit three dollars. It's like three 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 twenty five here a gallon. I think it's it's dropping every day. It drops. What yeah, it, Hunter. Yeah, yeah, same here. Yeah, same here in South Carolina, especially in Conway and you know Horry County in general, where our prices are actually lowering when it comes to gas. And well, that, that, that's I kind of want to touch a little bit more on what Matt was saying. Um, I actually had someone message me tonight um, asking what I charge for weddings, and um, and I said, well, what are you looking for? Where's your venue? How long you need? And, you know, just kind of get an idea. I mean, I have my different packages set up now. So, but, you know, I kind of told them, I'm like, you know, $1,200 is normally my base package. You get, you know, four moving heads, dance lighting, up lighting. Uh, if the venue allows it, I can bring in haze, fog, uh, whatever, um, and all that stuff. And he was like, $1,200? I said, yeah, and he said, uh, now does that cover me from, um, you know, from start to finish, or is that just a certain amount of hours? I said, that's from the minute you need me to the last person walking out of the building. And he said, oh, okay. He said, well, I've got a couple other quotes from some other people, and he gave me their prices. One was 700 and I want to say 50 or 775. The other one was 800. And he said, do you think you could do a little bit better? A little bit better, you know, price. And I said, "Well, I'm going to break it down like this, and I want you to think about this." I said, "I'm not trying to be mean." I said, "But just because they're cheaper, does it mean they're better? Does it mean their equipment's better? Does it make this? You know, ugh. is it going to make your wedding? I mean, this you're only going to get married hopefully once. You want something that's going to be memorable. You don't want him messing up on songs. You don't want the lighting not working right. You don't want the the music sounding like crap. You don't want him him seeing stupid stuff." You know, um, and I he sent me the the people's Facebook pages, and I was looking at their their deals, and I was like, okay, so where's their subwoofers? Um, I'm seeing one speaker, maybe two, and they're maybe you know ten inch speakers. They're running looks like a like Bluetooth stuff off their phone to the speakers. I'm like, you know, they don't have a very good setup. And he said, well, they're getting a lot of get, you know, booking a lot of stuff. And I was like, well, look at their pricing. That's why people are, you know, probably booking them. And then they're going, hey, we messed up. So um, I sent him a link to my Facebook page. I sent him a link to my YouTube channel. I said, here, take an hour. Don't message me back. Check out both of these links and then message me. And he said, wow, you uh, you got quite the setups. And I said, yeah. I said, because I take pride in my stuff. You know, I, I make the wedding as how I would want it as if it was my wedding. You know, I take pride in my stuff. I want people to look at me and be like, you know, you've, you've got some money wrapped up in it. And I said, that guy you sent me said May had two or three hundred dollars worth of equipment he brought in. I have anywhere from thirty five hundred to seven thousand dollars worth of equipment that I bring in at any given time. Well, no, you have your music library, too. You have to figure. Yeah, I told myself I pay for my music. You know, I've got my booth. My, yeah. I said I have to pay someone to come help me set up and tear down sometimes to make it easier on me. Um, I've got rehearsal. I've got to, you know, take time for the rehearsal. I've got to, to make your playlist. I, you know, I, I told him, I said, you know, you go down the street, you know, you don't want to drive two or three hours to get cheaper gas. You go get the gas that's more expensive. I mean, just because it's right there. But do you want to do that? with a DJ in your wedding. I said, you want your bride to be happy? I said, remember, happy wife, happy life. So, and he well, commented back, he said, yeah, you got some good points there. He said, I I do see what you're, you're saying, but uh, he just, he kept saying, he just kind of said, uh, you sure that's the best you can do? And I said, yeah, I said, honestly, if I go any cheaper, I'm going in the hole. I'm not going to be making money. I said, inflation's went up, you know, you have to pay, four dollar gallon gas whether you want to or not you have to pay seven to eight hundred dollars in tires on your vehicle whether they're seven or eight hundred dollars or they're three or four hundred dollars you got to pay the higher price 
because of the way the world is. I said, all of the DJs that I know have raised their prices. So anywhere you go to find a good quality DJ, you're going to have to pay for it. Do you want a cheap DJ that doesn't know what he's doing? That's, you know, that's yep. not, you know, really good. You're not going to pay very much. And at the end of your wedding, you're going to look back and be like, we should have hired DJ Fire. Or we should have hired Matt. Or we should have hired Buddy. Or we should have hired... What's his name? Can I give his name out? <laughs> DJ Cool <laughs> Thing. <laughs> yeah. We're working too hard. I would have just said, I, I, oh, yeah, I don't know. that cheap? Go ahead. I would yeah, just I'm, not really, like, yeah, I'm not really sure why people were hiring I was, not, I was going to, and then he told me, he said, well, apparently the new venue, mm -hmm. the venue they're going, he won't tell me the name of it. I don't know if it's because they don't know the name of it yet, but apparently it's supposed to open in February. Um, he said that... Um, the new venue they're going to say, I can get you a lot of geeks and I get you a lot of geeks because you know I know a lot of people that's getting married or that is getting engaged this holiday season. And I was like, well, are you using that against me to try to get me to give you a better price? And that's that's the thing. Every area is different in pricing, you know, and South Carolina is different in pricing than Southern uh, California, different from Central Night, but different from Chicago. And it, it's always, you know, you have other players in the market, you have other DJs in the market that will charge whatever they want to charge. If they're giving the same things you're giving. And again, Matt, you said you were at a couple of weddings and you had friends and family go to a couple of weddings and saw stuff. And you're like, wow, you're grossly undercharging for everything you give. And I know what I know Hunter does. I know you do. I know what Nathan does. And all three of you guys work really hard at it. I know I do what I do. With Tracy, we work all hard at our job doing the wedding, and we want to make sure we do the best job possible. The only thing is that, you know, sometimes these people don't know, because, again, they never hired a DJ before, and they don't understand what or how much stuff is. And I think I lost, may have lost Hunter. <laughs> uh, I'm still here. Before. Oh, okay, he's still here. I'm still here. I'm still you're, just, here. you're just sitting still. I'm like, wait, did I lose you? No, no, I'm, <laughs> no I'm, he's been I'm he's been he's been glitching I'm, in and out on my no, side. I'm listening. So it, I'm listening. It might just be the internet connection. Yeah, he might be, he might be a little bit just might be a little slow here and there. He might get a little buffing, but you know, it's just one of the things that when people come to you and tell you, hey, you know what, uh, DJ so and so is. X, Y, Z for pricing and they're giving and you go look what they give, you know, Hunter, you, you could charge whatever char you want to charge. Do I think you're more valuable than what you are? I think so. But again, it's your, it's your business. You charge what you want to charge. Matt, you're, you looked at it and said, Hey, I'm going to raise it. Nathan, you know, you're going to stick with your guns. That's, that's the same thing I would do. You know, I'm not a big fan for people call them and say, Hey, let's make a deal for pricing. Right. But, you know, for pricing for 2023, as of right now, I'm staying the course because we are in a pretty good place for pricing. Uh, again, I just did a price increase beginning of this year, and I printed a bunch of brochures. I don't have to reprint because that's not cheap to do. And I have wedding shows coming up, and I went to his wedding shows and had those prices. But I did raise my prices up across the board because everything went up in, in, in price, you know. Uh, uh, thank goodness, like certain services uh, held the same promo only, you know, hundred bucks a month, and you know some of the other uh, pools have been, you know, very economical. They haven't really changed their pricing too much, and thank goodness for that. But again, diesel fuel is, you know, what four ninety a gallon for diesel for me. Um, you know, oil changes cost money. Everything costs money, and. It, it's like anything else. What what do you want now? Let me let me just go back to the. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I don't want to talk bad about other DJ services and what they give, what they don't give. Um, but going back to you, Matt, on the services you had in, Cal in Southern California that you saw, mm -hmm. they weren't giving the same level you were giving, or they weren't giving the same amount of equipment you were giving, or what were they? They, they, they don't. Not they don't do what we do. I mean, very few companies out here do DMX lighting uh, or anything more than a gig bar, which is crazy to think about. I mean, you either get the super luxury weddings who have full on event lighting design, or you get, you know, your average DJ who's still charging like 2,500 bucks and bringing two speakers and a light bar with no subwoofer. And yeah, they're great DJs and all, but like that's, 
we, if you look at our Google reviews, the thing that gets mentioned most often is lighting. Uh, besides, obviously, you know, mixing and other things. Like I looked at some your of my photo, friends. Your photo booth, Matt, always looks really good. Yeah, and the photo booth too. And it's like we offer such a premium level of service that we should be charging that premium pricing. And I, I was a little easier on pricing as I was ramping up because you know we were still fresh in this area and didn't have as many Google reviews and uh, as big of an Instagram following. But now it's like to the point where it's like. I mean, you don't want to pay the pricing. Well, you're not going to get the kind of show that we deliver. Like if, if you want a standard DJ who's going to play your your dancing queen, your other lame wedding, what I call white bread wedding music, who's going to have a, a gig bar and two speakers and no subwoofer to where you don't, you know, you just want to hear some music and, and groove a little bit the whole night, then that you're not for us. But well, if spe you want especially charging, especially charge a premium price, right. $2,500, you expect a good sound system, a good light yeah. show, something. If they're going really, really basic, and they weren't, you know, again, they're charging, let's say, a thousand for me for like a thousand dollars. I have a twelve hundred dollar package. My twelve hundred dollar package is more basic, you know, because of the fact that it's designed for small weddings, it's designed for small groups, people who don't want to spend all the money on all the glitz and glamour. But if you're going to charge the same price as my platinum package. And you're going to only offer what I offer on my my bronze or my silver package. Well, you know that's not bad. That's that's not that that, that right there. You're 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 not giving the customer what they're paying for. And right. again, there's nothing wrong with using a gig bar. There's nothing wrong with having two speakers and a subwoofer. If that wedding, if they paid for that, and that's the wedding that they got. But if they're charging twenty five hundred dollars, and it's like, like for me. Yeah, like they could be paying that twenty five hundred to me and getting a hell of a show, is what I'm saying. And yeah, so that's and again, you have a heck of a show. And um, I know DJ Fire does DMX, Social does DMX, I do DMX. Hunter, do you do DMX on your lighting? Um, no, no, I used to try wired DMX, but mm -hmm. it's just so complicated. So I just go to each park hand and try to match the code on each of the park hands. But we're going to do master bar cans is actually probably one of the easiest to master slaves. Yeah. Well, you go check out I some of my do, videos on that. my YouTube I'm, channel. I'm gonna, well, I'm trying to stay away from DMX. It's just too complicated. Hey, I want some. Everyone just look who just look who's showing. Look who came in. <laughs> it's DJ Mike James. What's up, Mike? Hey, <laughs> hey. What's up, DJ, the round table. What's going on? Yo. We also we also have today a guest DJ. We have Hunter Jones, aka DJ, DJ Cool, cool thing. Entertainment, all the way from South Carolina. Uh, if you haven't done so, make sure you check him out on YouTube. DJ Cool Thing Entertainment on YouTube, and uh, make sure you look at uh, DJ Cool Thing. Make sure you look at DJ Mike James. He has great stuff, product reviews, and tech tips. He always has his oh, cool yeah. tech tips. And he tells you how to do things, including replacing that battery on a light. He did that. And, you know, he's an awesome, awesome dude. Uh, so glad to have you up here. We were just talking about uh, pricing and pricing for 2023. And Matt was explaining that he raised his prices up uh, a few months ago because he saw that other uh, DJs in his market were charging a similar price or similar um, pricing to what he's charging um, and giving less equipment than what he gives. So he took the initiative to say, hey, you know what? If these DJs are charging X amount of dollars for two speakers and a basic light, why am I not charging more for what I'm giving? I'm doing three times the work, making it look three times better, doing things like, you know, sparklers and, you know, CO2 cannons and all this other stuff. If I'm going All that stuff is upsells. All, if you have that stuff, that's an upsell. I mean, yeah. honestly, like I don't have it, so I mean, I can't offer that. But yeah. I'm already doing probably two, yeah. three times the work, yeah. other than DJ Fire. Yeah, you know, I'm doing two, three times the work yeah. than other people. Yeah. 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 I dropped yeah. my setup yeah. down a little bit, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> but here, here's the thing: is that even your setup, and I've seen your setup, Mike, and you, uh, DJ Fire, Ma Matt, Mike, and myself. Uh, we all talk on Instagram and instant instant message each other. And Hunter, you're more than welcome to send messages to me and share pictures if you want to. Uh, it's up to you. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna keep my I'm gonna keep my Instagram around. No, that's fine. That's, yeah. fine. that's fine. That's fine. I, I I know you had 
bad prop people doing bad uh, saying bad things oh, to you. So yeah. I understand that totally. But again, we share stuff all the time. And one of the things that Mike has been really great with, and I've done back and forth with him, I, I you know, sending pictures and stuff like that, is his displays, his look and stuff like that. Him and uh, him and DJ Fire and DJ Sauce, all three of these guys here, uh, so you know, uh, DJ Cool Thing, their displays are awesome. And I get kind of a little envy. I'm like, man, what, what is Matt doing there? What do I got to do to equal Matt? Why do you got to equal DJ Fire? Why do you got to equal DJ Mike James? Because – And we're out here, and we're out here in the country. Me yeah. Too. I'm out in the country. It, yeah, it's, it, it yeah, challenged me to become a better DJ, and that's why I, I like about it. And that's what – I like sharing this information here with you guys out there on YouTube and on, on Twitch is sharing this information on mm. my journey of what I'm doing. So you guys don't do the same things I do wrong. I just want to share what I do. And again, it doesn't mean, doesn't mean it's going to work for you, but if it does help you, that's the important thing to me. And that's why I ask people to come out here like DJ, uh, DJ fire and DJ cool thing. And, and then the DJ Mike James and DJ salsas, that's why I ask these guys to come on here to this show is because of the fact that I want to make sure that, you know, people hear different ideas and see different things. Yeah. If you look and, at my you know, set, yeah. Yeah. If you look at my setup, it's different than anybody else's, like any professional DJ. It's like a simple setup with two simple speakers, DJ controller, mixer, and eight park hands. And yeah, and it looks awesome, though. It looks awesome. And that's the thing in your market, it is an awesome thing. Now, again, Matt is in Southern California, so he's right. He's not far from L.A., so he's the glitch and glamour Hollywood in the area, uh, and it's great. Oh, oh uh, DJ, there, yeah. DJ Adrian E. says, share, 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 and by the way, hello, gentlemen. Thank you, DJ Adrian E. Um, but, you know, it's one of the things so, that, Adrian. it's one of the things that, you know, there's a lot of great stuff that we can do to make us different from other DJs, and Again, Matt taking initiative to do stuff. I know Mike James, he did some initiatives, uh, stuff that one of the manufacturers for Scrims wasn't doing. Him and his wife got together and for Halloween cut out like little bats and stuff and sewed it onto yeah, Scrims. That was, that was so cool. We didn't sew them on. We got, we got self-adhesive magnets and we just magneted them through the Scrims so we didn't mess it up. You know what I mean? It looked really cool, though. Yeah, it, it, it came out really good, and we did the same thing. We got a we got a Christmas party coming up the 16th, and we did the Grinch. He stole Christmas, and we got that silhouette with him creeping up the house stairs, and then we got Max with his reindeer thing, and it's going to be on the front of my scrim. So check out that video when it comes out. That party's oh, going to be that's going to be awesome. Not, that's going to be awesome, dude. Not this Friday, but next Friday. And then I picked up uh, another Christmas party for uh, Horizon Health Surgical Team. So I'll be doing back to back the 16th and the 17th. That's cool. That is cool. Yeah, uh, around that time I'm, I'll be on my way to Vegas, so I'm going there for uh, nice. vacation. So be on the lookout for a DJ vlog. Mobile DJ goes to a Vegas club. Yeah, he's going to go <laughs> nice. to a Vegas club, so he can say he was on he Vegas. Was the real DJ, a DJ it. on Vegas. You know, he didn't DJ and, in Vegas. Going to see like, and I'm I'm going to go see a huge DJ like big time. Club, yeah, I heard those guys were amazing, dude. So I mean, they'll knock your socks off, man. Yep, enjoy <laughs> yourself, uh, cool thing. Yeah. Just make sure you take you take well, them, each, them and, and, uh, and their oh, lighting yeah. engineer and all their people and the production value that they have in those shows out in Vegas. I'm sure it's sick. Like just and sick. DJ DJ Fire is uh, sharing uh, the YouTube channels there for DJ Cool Thing, DJ Fire, yeah. DJ Mike James. I appreciate that, uh, awesome. DJ Fire. He's doing that down in the chat. So if you see that in the chat, you can click directly on those and go right to their YouTube channels and support so, them for supporting the show. I'm, I'm getting you, man. Hold on. I'm trying to find your YouTube channel. I got to get your link. <laughs> DJ Salsa should be the easiest of all I'm, of us. I want that, okay? <laughs> he has, he, so he has check, probably, some of, he probably has the most gig logs of anyone here. Uh, and he has, uh -huh. uh, you know, the best intro. Of course, I may tease him a little bit here and there for his intro, but the thing is that it is. No, 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 no. Yeah, he does. The <laughs> sometimes, it's kind of, sometimes it's kind of hard to hear him because it's still going off and he's talking. I'm like, what did he say? <laughs> it's hard to get the timing down. I need to pause more and, and uh, <laughs> top, 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 top <laughs> the six. 
look up, count do your count, look up, count yeah, you gotta do that. And look back <laughs> down. Solstice, <laughs> solstice, just pre just pre-record your your bits on on your controller and then just mix yourself in. Yeah, right. Right? I try to do it in I try to do my gig logs in as little amount of takes as possible. Like you'll see I, yeah, I really I stand jump cuts. Like I'll see like Rick Webb or DJ Bars videos and it's jump cut, jump cut, jump cut every 10 seconds and it just makes me dizzy. And I'm like, how can you guys not like if if, if you don't know how to talk, like do a voiceover? Like it's I don't know. I, I like to try and do it in one take and what? One person that I know that can do a video shot with normally when we're doing product reviews or something like that, that, that I don't have to do much editing to, and that's DJ Mike James. He, know, he he can he don't have hardly a dead – he'll be like, all right, well, I'll be like, well, I'll have this up in like five minutes. He'll be like, all I got to do is cut the dead space where we shut the camera off and on, put mm -hmm. it together, put the transition, outro, intro, done. <laughs> the, gift, the gift of gab, man. Is, uh... I, I, I tried. I tried to do the same thing. You know, gig logs are hard on YouTube because of, of course, YouTube's cocky, copyright oh, strikes. Yeah, the copyright. Oh man. Yeah. Right. Oh man. Right. Oh, man. Right. Like, yeah. You know, they 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 don't the well. yeah. the gig logs are right. yeah. as well. It's like the light reviews. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. Epidemic yeah. Sound mm -hmm. has over fifty thousand songs you can use but you have to pay a fee of fifteen dollars you have to link your channel that you're using so when that pops up they're like okay he's paid for his subscription we're not going to do a copyright claim Is i it, have three I videos have dollars, I right here, yeah. dollars a month. yeah i always get here with a copyright claim all i don't i don't I don't care. Like I, I don't try. My channel is monetized, but I don't monetize the videos. So like, as long as the video could still be seen, like I don't care if there's a copyright claim. I'm not trying and to make money. One of my one of my recent gig logs, the '80s party, is partially blocked due to like four songs any hint. Yeah, but they're only blocked yeah, in Russia. Uh, even Russia even if Belarus. you don't monetize the videos, um, the copyright person can make it to where it won't be seen by that many people. So if you if you do fix it. Yeah. Then it, uh, what do you call it? It's, you know, you'll get seen by more because it'll say, we're blocking this from so many people. She won't get as many views as many people won't see it. Some people won't even have their hit their sub boxes. It just, and, but it's all changing. It's getting more harder to get uh, February uh, 1st. There's a bunch of new changes coming to YouTube. What is it? Is it $15 per month or $15 per? Well, there's different there's different levels. I will put here. I'll put the link in it. I'm the right now until the end of the month. If you register, you get one month free, um, and you can download. There's there's all kinds of music on here, and I I've seen people that are monetized using these songs. I'm like, well, I went typed in the name of the song and typed in where it come from. There's this uh, website called Epidemic Sound. They have rights. These are all copyright songs, but if you pay your, your fees, you can use them in your videos. Yeah, I've, I've heard of it. There's a lot of YouTubers I watch that have that type of service. I mean, there's some really good, it's not like cheap, weird stuff either, because YouTube used to put out good videos on their uh, audio thing on the studio, yeah. but they haven't oh, put yeah. really oh, anything oh, yeah, good out for a few months. Library. Yeah, the YouTube audio library. Yeah. Man, you know, it, it's always, you know, great information. And again, thank you, uh, DJ Fire, for that, especially if you're trying to do some gig logs. And my, my gig logs are not so much to, uh, you know, pro it's not so much to promote, it's more or less for customers to see what I'm doing mm -hmm. and see what um, what's available. And, you know, because uh, people a lot of times will ask, hey, can um, – can I come to a wedding and see what you're doing? And it's like, no, I'm working. I don't want you to wedding crash my my wedding. So it, it, it's 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 one of the things that that helps out tremendously, uh, putting videos up on YouTube. And I know a lot of people here, uh, some of the people watching right now are YouTubers. And it's great to uh, have that uh, library there of music that they can go into and then oh, not worry about copyrights. Um, I like... You know, when I watch the gig logs, I like watching the process, you know, and that's why I like doing, you know, a lot of times I'll do a setup and sometimes I'll do a teardown video also, you know, that whole process of what we actually do 
even though it's time lapse, it's super entertaining to me, and I want to see what the other guys are doing to set up and tear down. You know what I mean? And that's what I like about the gig logs, you know. So I always try to add that. I try to include that in mine. But I'm gonna have some new gig logs coming up this next spring because uh, I picked up. You know, you guys know I was doing the Eastern Illinois volleyball, and mm -hmm. I picked up the. Uh, the they they now have a beach volleyball league, and I picked up that, and it's gonna be at one of the public parks. So it's gonna be my setup, and like I'm sure you guys will want to watch those gig logs. <laughs> You'll, you'll back, see me back, over there recording three the young ladies. Back. That would not, yeah, that would not that would not be bad. Seeing some pretty young ladies. Uh, oh, there we go. He's got yeah, snacks. Yeah, All right, yes, snacks. <laughs> so look forward to that in the spring, man. Because uh, I'll be shooting gig logs on those on the setups and teardowns at the beach volleyball gigs for the college. You know. So let me ask let me ask uh, you guys this one: What do you usually use to record your uh, gigs? I know DJ Fire's got a Sony camera. Uh, I mean, Hunter, uh, what do you use? Like this, this is what I use for my gig logs: an iPhone. An yeah, iPhone. I've been using iPhone is ten, eleven, twelve. This is a uh, twelve Pro. Twelve Pro, okay. Matt, what do you use to record your gig logs? I got a Samsung Galaxy. That's I just use my phone. Yeah, I have a. Uh, I've got a sure. I've got a 14 Pro and a 13 Pro, um, which the or a 12, yeah, a 13 Pro and a 14 Pro. So both are the 13 Pro is a 512 gig, and then the uh, 14 Pro is a one terabyte. So iPhones, and I just I put my one on a, a tripod vertically, so I can get stuff for reels and stories, and I put one horizontally, and I pretty much just yeah. three times a night press record or record for an hour. That way, it's kind of split up and make yeah, it my easier. phone here. My That's phone it. here, the storage is 128. So it's an awesome yeah. setup, man. I ought to start doing that. Yeah, I found a really nice tripod that goes. I think it goes up to like seven feet. It's got a really nice extension on it, and it's got a hook, so you can put a sandbag down, so it minimizes like the bass uh, vibrations. So, um, right. what, you, what holder do you have, well, have for your video camera? Um, GoPro Hero 9. We're going to be getting the GoPro Hero 11. I've okay. heard really good things about it. And then I use this. Uh, I use a lot of my um, – I use this. This is the Sony ZV-E10. Uh, this is actually made for vloggers. This was made for vloggers. But I like it because it has the camera or the screen to flip. So, if I'm filming myself, I can see myself. And when I do B-roll of flying over, you know, wedding stuff and showing stuff off, I can flip it to where the camera's, the screen's pointing up at me so I can see. It's it's an all-in-all -all, cool. uh, good camera. And I'm also getting ready to upgrade the microphone in it, too. Uh, but GoPro, I do a lot of my time-lapse on because you can set this to time-lapse and it, the battery lasts forever. Um, I actually filmed my entire trip to St. Louis for Thanksgiving on one battery. Uh, it was oh, wow. at like it was at like nine percent when I got to St. Louis, but filmed the entire trip on time lapse the whole way there. Oh man! What, what, been, the, what, what stand been, do you what stand do you use, Hunter? What do you use to hold your phone? Um, I just hold it with my hand. Hold it, your hand. <laughs> I don't have a tripod. You have a tripod? What about you, Mike? You I use? actually have one, but it's a um. It's a Vivitar. It's a desktop like tripod that I, where I can. Oh, one of my nice ones. Okay. What do you got, Mike? Uh, my wife got me a basic. In fact, my phone's on my tripod right now. You know, it doesn't go up super high, and it's got like a you know an electric clamp on it so that it'll hold the phone. But that's what I use, and I just position that, set it up in front yeah, of us. You know what I mean? We set up. Well, you've seen my videos. And yeah. We set up. Have this one. It's also a ring. Oh, line. nice. That's that's for when you see your TikToks. <laughs> I uh, I use this too. Yulanzi, yeah, is a probably a Chinese company. They make a lot of camera gadgets. Um, this camera thing is it's a basically a handheld deal, but it extends. Oh, okay. and it has oh. tripod legs that fold out too. So it's oh, multiple. Well, but, but you Matt, what you use to record your uh, font with? You said you use a tripod. Yeah, I mean, I've got like two uh, like photo style tripods that are the tall ones, and then I have like a little handheld uh, Amazon one. It's kind of similar to the Gorilla Pod, but it's a little bit better with uh, like full three hundred and sixty rotation of the head, and then you could tighten it. Cool. See, there, I want to get a gimbal. I want to get a gimbal. Don't. It's I mean, it's always good information. Yeah, gimbal. I said some of the gimbals. The gimbals can get up there costly. 
pretty quickly. The, but again, you want to get something with stabilization. The the new stabilization on the iPhone 14 Pro uh, is almost as good as a gimbal, to where you can just film by hand. Uh, it's that good. So I I used to have a DJI Osmo Mobile Mobile two or three four whatever the newest one is, and I just hated using it because like. I'd have to take my phone in and out of it and recalibrate it every single time. And like every gimbal, like a gimbal is designed, uh, the camera's designed to stay in it for a long period of time. It's not designed to like get a couple shots, take it out, record something else, take a couple shots, you know? So I, I, I don't know. I, I'm not a gimbal person. I, plus like for me, yeah. I'd go from that to try to make the shot level versus just yeah. doing it by hand manually. <laughs> well, Mike, uh, Mike's lucky because his, his lovely wife is a photographer. So he does have yes. that. And then DJ Fire, he is a vlog master. I mean, he does so many <laughs> all those different channels. The man has, I, I, you, you're basically like running, you got four channels. Plus, I know you help out Mike here and there with some stuff. You've helped me with a couple of things, and I appreciate that. You know, yeah, so, uh, your, your bill should be in the mail. Did you get that? <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> kidding. Tell them, uh, tell them the payments and tell them the payments in the mail. Did you get that? I'll pay you the uh, fifth Wednesday. Did you get that? I'll pay you the fifth Wednesday of uh, February. Sounds, sounds good to me. I'll, I'll get you, I'll send you the next bill on the second Thursday of uh, next week. But yeah, it, it's 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 one of the things when you're 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 vlogging, you're trying to record stuff, even you're recording your stuff to do wedding shows. Like one of the things I I have now, I have two tablets now. Uh, one tablet is for um, for the Asterolites, and one tablet I use for for ceremonies. Both are Samsung tablets. Uh, but when wedding shows come up, I'll have both of these, and I have on this one pictures. I'll have pictures and video on this one. Both will be the same, but the thing is that when you're doing stuff, even if you're recording for yourself, not to do a YouTube channel, not to do that kind of stuff, just having those recordings. So when you talk to someone, someone says, hey, have you been to such and such a location? Well, yes, I have. Here's some pictures. Here's some video. This is what I did to the last wedding there. Would you like to have the same thing? Would you like to improve upon it? Would you like to have something different? All those things right there are nice to have. What I just started doing um, that I think will probably help me at some point is instead of, well, besides posting pictures and videos on my pro, like my Google business listing page, uh, I'll use my Google business profile to post those videos and pictures to the venues pages. So that, that way, if somebody's looking at that venue, they see a DJ post picture of a setup or a crowd dancing or whatever. They're like, oh, that DJ's definitely been there before let me click on his page see what else he's done boom inquiry right there so i just started doing that yeah. on sunday i'll let you know how it goes i've been doing that to google to maps. Do that too. Mm -hmm. i've been doing yeah. it on google maps for a long time for years and i've gotten a lot of gigs because of that yeah. you go to well, google I, maps you know, hope up a venue mm -hmm. you click on their photos and it says add photos you can take photos and video and click and drag right over and add to right to google maps and so when people go on their google maps they google you know, such and such venue, and they see the pictures there, they click on the pictures, and start scrolling through the pictures, it's not just oh, people that's, at the that's table taking a picture. On there. You put those on there through Google Maps? Yeah. Hell, I'm going to go back through and start putting some stuff up, man. Oh, yeah, easy. Easy, simple. If you want to add stuff to, Google, to Google Maps, all you do is, any venue you've been to, you get the pictures for it, they're, they're good quality pictures, all you got to just, you have, and you have your Google account, all you got to do is open up, Go to that venue, and you'll see over there, it says photos. I want to add photos. Mm -hmm. Add photos. A little screen pops up, says click and drag here. Click and drop. Click, All and, right. drop, click and drop. If you're doing video. Oh, good information. Video good information. Video can't be big or long, so you can't do like 4K for five minutes. Oh, yeah. But, you know, you can, do 10, you can do 720 at, you know, 20, 30 seconds and drop it over there. Sweet. Good but information. Is, there's a, uh, like, every month I get an email with a link to my Google timeline that says, hey, here's your Google timeline. You can look back at the yeah, last I get that days too. where you've been. And you, you can go, okay, say I did a wedding on the 20th and blah, 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 such a month. I go to the 20th, you know, scroll to the 20th. Okay, here's my route. There's the venue. Click on the venue. That way you don't have to actually go to the, you know, it, 
it's on the your timeline. It knows exactly. It's weird. Google knows where we're at at all times. It's because well, your nuts. phone knows where you're at at all times. Well, that's what I meant. Yeah. Well, every, Apple does the same thing. Google does it. Everyone does it. They they want to know where you're at because they want to sell you stuff. But it's here's one of the things when we get down when we get out the show here. You guys stay on for a minute or two if you can. And Hunter, if you can stay for a minute or two, it'd be great. Yeah, I'm playing. And I will I will show you real quickly on Google Maps yeah, because I don't go to, I don't go to bed until like one thirty two o'clock in the morning anyway. No problem. Um, I will show you real quickly on Google Maps off uh, off camera so you guys kind of have an idea how to do it because it's easier to do it to show you guys versus try and do it through the video. Mm -hmm. um, and it's 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 a very simple thing. So it's it's a great thing to do and it's something you can add. And again, Matt Matt hit on it, adding that stuff onto Google. Because you give a few DJs do it, or you have people taking a picture of stuff, but they're not. Well, I automatically DJ saw the advantage. You know, I automatically saw the advantage of it as soon as he said it. I was like, "Oh, okay. You yeah, know, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, I want to be on though. I want my videos and pictures on that. You know, for sure. Yep. And that that's the thing. It's for sure. what you want to yeah. do. So, well, let's do this. Um, it's coming time to. Do you want to touch on what me and you've talked about this evening? Or do you want to wait until you get more info on it? On which part? Yeah, yeah. Well, I was telling you guys about the beach volleyball thing and, uh, you know, how, how much trouble I've been having, like, getting scrims designed. I think I might have found somebody locally that will be able to print my scrims for me. I mean, think about how amazing that's going to be. Like, if I want to do a pumpkin design for a Halloween, I, of course, i got to buy a scrim. And I think I got a guy here locally that'll actually get it printed up for me. That's cool. scrams, That's very yeah, cool. Speaking of scrams, I retired my 360 speaker stand scrams. No longer using speaker stand scrams, but I am using a table scrim, though. So, I'm yeah. using my, my totems as, well, I'm using my totem. I always, I have my subs, uh, my my mains are on my sub poles, like I'm right over my subs, you know, so I don't, That's cool. I don't put speaker stands up. They're on subs. You know what I mean? But so and, uh, to, to combat that, I put the totems up, you know, but I'm just wondering if I can get totems printed, I can get my scrims printed, I can do Halloween themes, I can do New Year's, I can design my own stuff and put it out there and have it on the front of my booth, my logo, uh, EIU, OVC, all that stuff. I mean, that's going to be awesome. I mean, it's going to be amazing if I can get this done. Yeah, that, that's good for you. That And, that, and again, it, it gives you differences from other DJs in the market, and that's what you want. Just like Matt did. Matt, look what other DJs were doing in his market and said, hey, I'm doing a better job. You know, I'm sure now Hunter's probably going to look at some other DJs and go, hey, what can I do different? I know he does stuff differently. He does he does stuff. But he may say, hey, I do this differently and show why he's a better DJ <laughs> than these other guys in his market because he does things the way he does it. Just like you guys do down in Central Illinois, you guys, there's a lot of other DJs down there. But both you guys do stuff differently. They're not doing work, dude. Yeah, those other guys aren't doing what, what we're doing. I mean, they're no. they're just not. I mean, there's there's not, not a whole lot of DJs that that I've seen at weddings. I've been to a couple of weddings this year that I haven't DJed or Mike hasn't DJed, and they don't run scrims. They don't run. They don't try to make their like. When I first started, I really wasn't too worried about cabling. Now I'm always worried. Oh my gosh, is my cabling uh, in? Does it look well, good? my cabling? Yeah, with my cabling, since I know. No longer have scrams. I actually use my Velcro ties to tie down the the cable. And that there there helps out a lot. That, given the and you don't you don't need to have scrams. You can have an, what's called an industrial look, which is you know speaker yeah. stands. And but mm -hmm. if you had those cable ties nice and tight, and they, they're not laying around everywhere. And again, mm -hmm. we always miss a cable here and there. There's a lot of times I take pictures and I share pictures with people. I'm like, oh, I missed that cable, or oh, hey, I have a I have a I have a can of liquid death, which Matt says he doesn't like. He doesn't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get, there, the you know? <laughs> I don't get the obsession. I don't get the obsession. This is not. This is not. This is not sponsored by Liquid Death. But if they want to sponsor the show, Matt will become a fan of Liquid Death. <laughs> hey, so I, got a, I got a quick question for you. Uh, yeah. are, are, how hard is it for you to get RCF subwoofers, the Dual Eight Kings? Uh, so I'll tell you this. I ordered them in December last year and they as of last week they were officially 60 days out 
Uh, I got a quote. Oh, yeah. I got a quote mm -hmm. last Friday for six grand for a dual eighteen inch RCF. Does that sound right? Yeah, I so I when I well they've, they've gone up in price. When I ordered them, I got a deal from IDJ now for a pair of them with cases and casters uh, for ten grand uh, plus. I think like it, I think the total was like ten ten thousand three hundred. So uh, I didn't drop all that at once. I split it into payments. Um, what? But um, yeah, that sounds about right. Um, Can you? Through your ears and through the in your venues, can you tell the difference between a dual 18 inch cabinet or two with two single 18s? Yeah, 100%. Can you the, tell the difference? The dual 18, it, it's night and day. I mean, even pairing two single 18s together, you're not going to reach. There, there's just something, especially with RCF, there's just something so powerful about a dual 18 that you just, the base. It, Two, two single 18s is not going to compete with one dual 18, which sounds crazy, but yeah. And those RCFs, I mean, that, that the dual 18 and dual 21 that they have are, it's it's insanity. I mean, they're... The, they're the company that... They're probably, you know what? Rest. They're probably wired series at like 4 ohm and just drawn max power, which most, you know, normally we don't do that. You know what I mean? My, In pro audio, but they do... My, my 21s, audio. the dual 21s I have, they have to go on separate circuits uh, because I had both of them right. plugged into a single 20 amp and it blew the, the breaker for the single 20 amp. So I, I can see that. Yeah. So, But okay, nothing, nothing else is plugged I'm, in. I'm going to wrap yeah. it up here real quick because we're out of time. First thing first, I got to thank Hunter, a.k.a. DJ Cool Thing, Cool Thing Entertainment on YouTube. Make sure you follow his channel there. DJ Fire, Nathan, don't forget to follow DJ Fire on YouTube. DJ Mike James, uh, Mike, always great to have you on here. And, of course, Matt, Thanks DJ Smith on YouTube. Make sure you follow him as well as my channel, TVM Productions, DJ One on YouTube. So make sure you follow all the channels. DJ Salsa, look, he's got he's got his name up there. Look at that. Gotta love that. Yeah. So That's make sure you follow drive. it, like, subscribe to the channels. Make sure, you, if you haven't done so already, follow uh, here on Twitch. If you're watching this live, uh, make sure you go to YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, come over to Twitch. Remember, like, subscribe. Uh, put any critiques, eh, if I can talk about it, any critiques, any questions, anything in the lower part of the channel, we will answer it next time on DJ Roundtable again. We're live on Twitch on Tuesday nights at 9 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Central, 7 o'clock Mountain, 6 o'clock Pacific time. And we thank you guys all for tuning in. If you're watching us on YouTube, come join out, hang out with us live. Again, thank you guys and appreciate all.